In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to never lose a mark on energy stores and transfers questions. These are really straightforward. You just need to memorize the eight stores and four transfers, and then just identify the starting store and the final store and the energy transfer between them. Make sure you watch to the end so you can answer the hardest questions about energy stores and transfers. All you need to do to get full marks on these questions is identify the starting store, the energy transfer, and the final store. The most important thing we do know about energy is that we can calculate it. And we have these equations which are useful for calculating the magnitudes of those energy stores. These are some things that you should know already. The equation for gravitational potential energy, the equation which links work done, force and distance, the equation for kinetic energy, and the equation for elastic potential. If you don't know these things, then I suggest you go back and watch my video about work done, potential energy, and kinetic energy. These are some things that you need to memorize as well for your GCSE. If you do, then pause now and have a little go at writing these out, and then I'm just gonna show you what the answers are. So the equation for gravitational potential energy is mass times g, which is gravitational field strength times height. The equation for work done is force times distance. The equation for kinetic energy is a half times mass times speed squared. And the equation for elastic potential energy is half times spring constant times extension squared. This lesson is all about energy stores and transfers. Let's just begin by talking about James Joule, which is the person which we named the unit of energy afterwards. Now he wanted to compare the power of steam engines, and he did this by comparing how quickly they could lift a mass through a set height. So the weight of the thing through a height divided by the time to give the power. When we begin talking about energy, everybody wants to know, well, what is it? And this is one of the most fundamental questions in physics. And this chap here, Richard Feynman, is one of the best explainers of physics that there has ever been. He's known as the great explainer. He is an incredible person. He was an incredible person, an incredible physicist who explained some of the most difficult concepts in quantum physics. So in his energy lecture, which is one of the best explanations of what we know about energy at the moment, he said, in physics today, we have no knowledge of what energy is. We don't have a picture that energy comes in little blobs of a definite amount. It's not that way. However, there are some formulas for calculating some numerical quantity. And when we add it together, it all gives 28. It always gives the same number. It's an abstract thing. Now you have to accept that with energy, that we don't have a thing that energy comes in. We don't have a fundamental piece of energy. It's not like coins, which come in certain values. There is nothing like that for energy. It's not a physical thing, but it is something that we can calculate. And when we look at two different stores and we know that energy from one store has been transferred into another, we can calculate them and show that they're the same size. So the maths kind of adds up and that is our best explanation of what energy is. He talked about it being this kind of universal accounting system. A lot of people say it's a measure of how much you can do. It's a measure of what change is possible. And certainly energy changes are the drivers of change. It's a tricky concept and basically we have no idea what it is, but we do know that everything in the universe is made of it. We do know that all mass and energy are really the same thing. And all that's been really happening in the universe so far since the Big Bang is energy has been converted into mass and mass has been converted into energy. There's this creation and annihilation that's going on and this is governed by this huge equation in physics E equals mc squared. If you want an answer, what is energy, then I'm afraid that my response is, and physics's current understanding is, we don't know. Importantly though, we can calculate it. So this topic, this whole topic of energy is all about understanding that we have energy and it can be stored in different ways. And all that's going on in the universe really is that one store empties, there's an energy transfer into another store and that store fills. One store decreases, energy is transferred, another store fills. So we have different ways that we can store this energy. And there are eight ways that we can store it. There are eight stores. There's a chemical store, a thermal, a kinetic, a gravitational, elastic, nuclear, electrostatic, and magnetic. There are eight different stores, memorize them. There are four different transfers. There are four ways that we can get energy from one store into another. There's mechanical work, 
electrical work, heating by particles, and heating by radiation. You're going to make this topic a lot more simple for yourself if you memorize those eight stores and four transfers and you get used to how you can recognize them. And that's really what this presentation is all about. Whenever you are asked to explain what's going on in terms of energy transfer, just identify the starting store, the final store, and the transfer that takes place from that list of eight stores and four transfers have a little go now can you memorize can you name the eight stores can you name the four transfers and have a little think can you state the energy transfer involved when you lift up the your bag so think if you lift up your bag how do you transfer the energy and can you state the energy transfer involved when you charge your phone have a little think i bet you can already recognize certainly those two energy transfers the eight energy stores are chemical thermal kinetic gravitational elastic nuclear electrostatic and magnetic the four transfers are mechanical work, electrical work, heating by particles and radiation. The energy transfer when you lift up your bag is mechanical work. You're using a force to do mechanical work. The energy transfer when you charge your mobile phone is electrical working. You are using electricity to transfer energy. So the way to begin to recognize these stores is to think of examples. Think of examples for each of these eight stores of what you think a large store would look like. What would a large chemical store of energy look like? What would a large thermal store of energy look like? Try and give some factors that you think indicate that that's a large store of energy. I'm not expecting you to know all these yet. I'm not expecting you to know every single factor, but I'm expecting you to try and just have some idea of what a large thermal store might look like, a large kinetic store might look like. Pause the video now, get your ideas down, and then check back with me. So one example of a large chemical store would maybe be petrol. And the factors into that would actually be the chemical entropy changes in the molecules when, when we burn the petrol. I don't want to worry too much about the chemical store because you'll never have to actually calculate a chemical store in physics. You have to do entropy changes in chemistry, but you won't have to do that in physics. So we don't want to worry too much about the factors of this one, but essentially different chemicals have different entropy changes that are possible when they do chemical reactions. Chemical energy is something that's unlocked, if you like. That store can be changed when you do chemical reactions. It can be increased or decreased. So the thermal store might be superheated steam. Steam much higher temperature than 100 degrees. And the factors into that would be high temperature, high mass, and a high specific heat capacity. Again, that's something that we'll come on to, but those are the factors that influence the size of a thermal store. A large kinetic store might be a supersonic aircraft. So it would have a high mass and it would have a high speed. It would have a large kinetic store of energy. Gravitational store, a large gravitational storm might be bricks. They're heavy, lifted by a crane that would lift them through a high height. A large elastic store might be a compressed susp suspension fork, so something that's had a large force to compress it. And the, the factors would be stiffness and change in length. So the more it's compressed, the more energy that you'd store in that elastic store of the spring. A nuclear store, a large nuclear storm might be the nuclear fuel in a nuclear power station. And that might be the mass of the radioactive isotope that you have. If you have more uranium in the power station, then you might have more of a nuclear store. You might have more energy in the nuclear store. Again, you might not have done nuclear physics yet, but this is the idea that just if you have more of that radioactive material, then you're going to have a larger nuclear store. The sun is a large nuclear store of energy. That's the normal example given, in fact. Nuclear energy is energy that's stored within the nucleus of atoms. A large electrostatic store might be the national grid transmission wires. You know, those overhead cables that link up pylons and take energy into our homes to be used for our electrical appliances. And the reason why that would be a large um, energy store would be because of the large potential difference. A large magnetic store might be an MRI scanner, a magnetic resonance imaging scanner, which has a very, very powerful magnetic magnet, a magnet with a large magnetic flux density. So those are just some examples. You could have had different examples, but that might help you to start to identify the different stores as you go through this topic. The four transfers then, mechanical work, electrical working, radiation, which is heating by waves, and heating by particles, which is conduction and convection. Pause the video here. Think of an example of a process which is transferring that energy at a high rate and explain what factors you think make your process you've picked a high rate of transfer of energy. Once more, I'm not expecting you to really know these and get exactly the same answers as I've given, but the point is you're going to need to be able to recognize these four energy transfers and identify them. So here's some examples. Pushing a heavy box along bumpy ground would require a lot of mechanical work. You'd have to do a large force, and if you had to push that over a large distance, you'd be doing more work. 
Electrical working might be a high current in a wire, so lots of charged particles flowing at a high rate. Then the, the factors into that would be a high potential difference and a large current. A high rate of heat transfer by radiation might be a hot, matte, black kettle. So the matte refers to it's, it's not shiny and black is the color and it, it's got a lot of heat, it's at a high temperature. That would actually transfer energy by radiation more rapidly than a cool, shiny, silver kettle. The, the factors being then temperature, color and luster. Luster means how shiny something is. A high rate of heat transfer by particles would be maybe heat transferring quickly through a metal spoon used to stir a boiling pot. You wouldn't do that, would you? Because you would burn your hand. The heat would be transferred rapidly from the hot water to the end of the spoon. So the factors in that rate of heat transfer would be a high temperature difference and a high thermal conductivity. Rate of transfer of energy is something that we will do more of later, but I just want to pause and, and think about that because you will already have some ideas about that. And it's important that you use terms like power correctly. Now, I'm sure you can tell me out of the uh, smart car, even though that's a smart Brabus <laughs> and the Lambo, which one of these two is gonna have the highest power? Which car is the most powerful? And well, how do you know that? pause and have a little think to yourself what is it which one is the most powerful and why well the lambo is more powerful because it transfers more energy from the chemical store at a higher rate into the kinetic store it increases its kinetic store a lot more rapidly than the smart car would now power is defined as the rate of transfer of energy and that's given by this equation energy divided by time energy transfer divided by time i just wanted to tell you about that now whilst we're talking about one store empties and another store fills this idea of transferring energy between stores so just identify the starting store, the energy transfer, and the final store. Pause and have a little crack at these two questions here. Now I want to really focus on this, explaining energy changes in terms of starting stores decreasing and other stores increasing. Identify the transfer that takes place to move the energy from a store to store in a petrol car and a falling ball. So identify the starting store, identify the transfer, how the energy gets from starting store to final store, and identify the final store. Just make simple sentences like that. And then there's two simple calculations for you to have a go as well. Pause the video now and have a go. So in a petrol car, the chemical store of the fuel decreases. So I've said what the store is, and I've said the thing which is storing the energy. So chemical store of the fuel decreases. Energy is transferred by mechanical work, that's the transfer. And the kinetic store of the car increases. So this is just simple sentences. All I have done is identify the starting store, the transfer and the final store. That's all, that's all you need to do. If you memorize that simple sentence structure, you just need to identify starting store, final store, transfer, and put them into that sentence structure. So for a falling ball, the gravitational store of the ball decreases, energy is transferred by mechanical work, it's by forces, the kinetic store of the ball increases. Here are these calculations, simply substitute the numbers in because they're all in SI units and do the calculation. The thing that we definitely do know about energy is that we can calculate the size of those energy stores. These are the equations you can use to calculate the size of those stores. As Feynman said at the start, then the thing about energy which is important is that we have ways of calculating it. So think about the factors that we talked about earlier into the size of each of these stores and think if you can identify an equation which is going to allow you to calculate the size of those stores. That is the crucial idea in this whole energy topic is about calculating the size of energy stores and then you can use that information to make other calculations later. So pause the video now and see how many of the equations for these stores that you already know. Before you pause, then just to avoid you getting confused, you will not be expected to know how to calculate a chemical store, a nuclear store, or a magnetic store in GCSE physics. There is a way to calculate a chemical store. It's the sum of the total enthalpy changes during a chemical reaction. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about that because that will be for your chemistry GCSE. So for a thermal store, there's two ways. There's energy is mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change. That's for heating and cooling of things. Or there's energy is mass times specific latent heat for a change of state. Kinetic energy is an equation that we talked about at the start. A half times mass times speed squared. Gravitational potential is mass times G times height. Elastic potential is a half times the spring constant times the extension squared. E equals mc squared is a way to calculate a nuclear store, but don't worry, we don't need to use that at GCSE. If you're into your physics, then that will come into A level, and that's a really cool unit. 
Electrostatic is several ways of doing this, but one way is energy is potential difference multiplied by charge. You could also use energy as potential difference times current times time. And lastly, magnetic, and again, you don't have to use this either, is what we call the energy. The magnetic energy is the magnetic moment multiplied by the magnetic field strength. Perpetual motion is a really interesting idea about energy and physicists have been talking about this, people have been talking about this for a long, long time. And if you can solve this, then you will be instantly rich. Could you ever have perpetual motion? Now by perpetual motion is something that we start it in motion and it will keep doing that motion forever. In fact, it will keep pushing against itself. It will keep working against frictional forces and it will allow, let's say, us to design a car or a vehicle that could drive forever without any input energy. So have a little think about that. Is there any way that you could actually make a perpetual motion machine? People have been trying for ages and here's some ideas about it. But the truth is that you could never ever have perpetual motion. There is just not possible at all. You cannot get something for nothing. And that is the law of conservation of energy. And that's what we'll go on to next. Remember what Feynman said, there are, there are formulas for calculating some numerical quantity. And when we add it all together, it always gives 28. Now that number is not important, but it's always the same number. So we always have the same value of energy at the start as we do at the end. Whenever in a closed system, we do some energy changes. Whenever we change the way that objects are arranged in a system, we always have the same energy before as we do after. They're just stored in different ways. This is the law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, just transferred from store to store. And it's the most fundamental law in physics, probably. Importantly, we know that the size of the stores before a interaction is equal to the size of the stores after an interaction. So the change in one store is equal to the change in another store. The decrease of one store equals the increase in another store. One store empties and another store fills. And we can use that to make useful calculations in what we call energy analysis. And that's coming up in the next video. Let's go on to number four now. A student observes that a pellet fired from a catapult is pulled back further, leaves the catapult at a higher speed. Use ideas about energy to explain this. Well, the greater the extension of the catapult, the greater the elastic potential store of energy it has. When this catapult is released, mechanical work is done. There's a mechanical transfer of energy between stores. The energy stored in the catapult is transferred into the kinetic store of the pellet. So we've identified the start store, we've identified the final store and the transfer. The larger the elastic store, the larger the kinetic store, and so this means that it has a higher speed. Next one, calculate the kinetic energy of a pellet which is fired by a catapult with a spring constant of 30 newtons per meter, pulled back 20 centimeters. Notice that's not in SI units, nor is the mass of the pellet, which is three grams. Pause it now, copy and complete this to check that you've got what you're supposed to get from this video. When a ball rolls down a ramp, it's gravitational store of energy is transferred mechanically into its kinetic store. Because the law of conservation of energy is that the energy cannot be created or destroyed, there is a maximum possible speed the ball can reach. We can calculate that speed using energy analysis. I hope that video was useful for you. Make sure you like the video. Let me know that you found it useful by just commenting boom in the comments below and subscribe to Gorilla Physics. This is Gorilla Physics. Other channels explain the content, but at Gorilla Physics, I'm gonna teach you how to get the grade nine. Check out gorillaphysics.com for all of my videos organized by topic.